Best of May 2013 edition of Why So <laughs> Oh, that's again. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> Broken Heads. Rory Cushion. Mary Burke. On camera. Hi. On camera, yo. We're going to start with the third best movie of uh, May, in our opinion. Because that's what we do. We can we give you our opinion. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, and that third best one, in my opinion, because you don't really agree with me, do you? Mm-hmm. The Gatekeepers. Mm-hmm. The Gatekeepers is a documentary uh, about the Israeli yeah. version, kind of, of the CIA or the MI5. Very high profile, not high profile, low profile, <laughs> to, but like the top tier of security, homeland security, I guess, of the nation. It's all the previous uh, heads of the heads Shin Bet. Of, of the, Shin Bet. It's the actual name of it. And it's interviews with them, uh, their opinion on the Israeli and Palestinian war and that whole thing. It was very interesting, very... Uh, dense. Dense is very the dense. Yeah. There's no like, time to go to the bathroom or for your own thoughts because <laughs> there's so much. And if you skip a bit, it's just like, why is he and what? Yeah. But uh, it is very, very, very... Uh, Good. It is fascinating, but I found when watching it, this is one of the things that I do remember about it, that um, my history, my knowledge of the history of the region is a little bit sketchy, and without a strong knowledge of this history, you will be a little bit lost, as I was. It's not that it wasn't interesting, it was just that a certain amount of knowledge on behalf of the viewer was presumed that I didn't have. Yeah, that's a fair <coughs> thing to say. There's no, like... Previously on the Israeli Palestinian war, <laughs> it's just you know what we know, and now we're telling you what, what you may not have known, and that's not always the case. Mm. But I thought it was still very good. I would give it 7 out of 10. Okay, I'm going to reserve judgment on this one because, like I said, I don't actually remember a lot about it. It was during Jadif, it was a whole thing. And a whole month is just lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the third worst Ooh. boo of May was. Dead Man Down? Dead Man Down, yeah. I almost forgot the name of it. Yeah. Colin Farrell is a Hungarian... Why? Uh, Hitman? Hitman? Let's go with Hitman. Yeah, He's part of an organised crime ring or whatever. Uh, and his neighbour, Elizabeth Sander, yeah. sees him murder someone, so she blackmails him into killing someone who ran her over a year ago. She's all scarred face. Really bad. Makeup scars like really shitty, like someone just got a thing of candle wax. It's like Mary look awful. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she looks the same, yeah. but with candle wax in her face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and who else is in it? Terence Howard. Yeah, and uh, is, Isabel Huppert. He's the lead guy in the crime ring, mm. and there's a whole thing with him, Con Farrell, which we're not going to give away because it's oh, a lot yeah. of the plot. Uh, yeah, it was very dull, very forgettable. It's For the director of the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo film as well, so I was expecting quite a bit because it was his first English language film. Yeah. But produced by the WWE, the World Wrestling Entertainment. <laughs> that was so weird when that came up on the screen. It was like, what? So we were like, this could be... Uh, no. No. Um, I found the problem with it was that it was very much like a TV movie. And seeing as the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was made for TV, it seems that this director, whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce, it is Forte is TV movies. Um, and you should probably stick to them, really. Um, but even as a TV movie, it wasn't a great one. No. Uh, it only really kicked in towards the end when explosions and car chases and stuff started Ridiculous to Ridiculous explosions, though. It really, like, the whole film should have been kind of taken-esque. Taken-esque? Yeah. Yeah. But instead, it was very somber and serious. And, oh, we're like, it was very oh. taken to us. Until the end, when it all went off. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it has the worst case of Chekhov's gun I've ever seen, and then for it not to be used. Yeah. was awful. The whole film is like, there's a bomb in this building, and when the bad guys come on, I'm going to blow that building up. And they never do. No. <laughs> <laughs> was waiting, looking at that building to blow up, and something's happening over here. And then Colin Farrell drives a car into a house. It's a whole thing. This whole thing. Mm. Um, Dominic Cooper's in it as well. What the heck? I think he just had like a spare day between the other Yeah, and Isabel Huppert, who was in like a more amazing French actress, turns up in this film as a half deaf, nagging mother of Lisbeth Salander's. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and dump her. It's just. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Three, four, two, out of ten. Three. Three, I found it infuriating. Second best Woo, of May. Activity. We have one each because we couldn't settle on this. 
So I'm going to go to Ladies first. Mine is The Great Gatsby. Mine is Fast and Furious 6. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think we're sticking to gender stereotypes right there. <laughs> um, Great Gatsby, based on F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel um, about a man named Jay Gatsby. And he's throwing these massive parties in the 20s in the hopes that the woman who lives across the bay from him will finally go to one of his parties and he can become acquainted with her. Um, stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Carrie Mulligan, Tobey Maguire, um, Isla Fisher. Yeah, that's about it. Directed by Baz Luhrmann and probably the best soundtrack of the year so far. Um, it, it's based on a novel that is 150 pages long. And obviously F. Scott Fitzgerald, when he was writing this story, he was like, this is a story that needs to be short and impacting and punchy. And Baz Luhrmann kind of didn't pick that up. Um, it's a two-hour movie. It should have been 90 minutes at the most. 220? Yeah. It's two hours 20. Yeah. Uh, the 3D was absolutely pointless. Yeah. Apart from one scene, maybe. Um, looks gorgeous. Kerry Mulligan is just vapid and personality void she's just like she's supposed to be this character that all the men are falling in love with and throwing their lives away for but she's just kind of boring like her dresses are nice but that's about it yeah, my, my biggest problem with the Gatsby film was there was no one to root behind I didn't really like anyone Tobin Maguire I thought was terrible as the narrator didn't like him Joel Edgerton was very good as the bad guy but he was a bad guy so you mm. can't like him Kerry Mulligan we've already discussed DiCaprio is great in everything he does he is. and it's the closest thing we have to someone to follow in the film but his character arc is pretty much, why doesn't she love me? I have money now. Mm. So I was just like, I don't like any of these people, so yeah. I don't care about any of this. It was just rich white people with their rich white problems for two and a half hours. Yeah, looks but gorgeous. It looked great. Looked absolutely gorgeous. And uh, there were some nice little touches. And like I said, the soundtrack was amazing. Although I felt that Emily Sande's version of Crazy in Love was used in the wrong place in the film because it made people laugh at a very tragic moment. So I was kind of annoyed about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of ten? Six for me. I would give it six, and I'm going to give it an extra point for the soundtrack because it's so good. So seven. I'm going to go to fast six really quickly. She ate up all my time. Mary can edit me. me. Um, people in cars drive into people with other cars. Set in London. That's pretty much <laughs> it. People who may have been dead before are no longer dead now. And it's uh, it's the Expendables cast but filled, filled with people you may not have heard of. And there's a runway that people have done the math on, and it's 29 miles long. Yeah, the finale. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty good action film. Didn't like as much as I enjoyed Fast Five. Um, the action sequences, when they do kick in towards the end especially, are fantastic and overblown and over the top in the most mindlessly enjoyable way you could imagine. Mm. The acting is exactly as you expect in this kind of film, so don't go in expecting you know, Oscars for that or the screenplay. The uh, screenplay was awful. Yeah, it was just... If you use your brain at all, even a little bit, you're going to have severe problems with yeah. this yeah. But if you go in on like a Friday night after, you know, one or two points, great time. Great time. Uh, I would give it 7 out of 10. So. I am not a fan of the franchise, which is kind of, um, I think you have to be to review these films. So I'm just going to say that I would give it 6 out of 10. I appreciate the fans would really like it. Second worst Boo. Boo. of May was... Deadfall. Dead Olivia Wilde, who was part Irish. Mm. Good for you. She went to college just like, just across there in Temple Bar. They don't, don't, don't tell them where we are. Oh shit. Because they'll come. <laughs> they'll find people us. Will, people, like, people of Deadfall will find us. Like, like, uh, she went to college like, you know, in the city centre because we're in the suburbs right now. Of Sweden. Yeah. Eric Bana and Olivia Wilde are brother and sister who just robbed a casino. Yeah. Uh, they're on their on way from America across the Canadian border in a car crash they separate go their separate ways so they won't get caught Olivia Wilde runs into Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy uh, she and he meet up with their family who's Chris Christopher and Sissy Spacek Basic. Yeah. while Eric Benaz got the other way he runs into his own set of problems like a mystical Indian and then he wasn't uh, that mystical he was just the dude in like, Japanese. I knew you were going to kill me today remember that? Yeah, well, that just could have been a hangover in fairness that could, do, could have just been hung over. And then an abusive <laughs> family who live in a hut smaller than this couch. Yeah, it was 
trying to be Fargo, kind of, but it was like a fifth is good. No, not even a fifth is good. Really weird relationships between the characters. Like mm. there's this whole sort of weird incesty, incesty thing that happens, and it's just, it's not even explored to to explain where it's kind of come from. It's just fucking weird. Yeah. Um, and gross. Actually, more unsettling than the finale, which was supposed to be very unsettling, but it was just kind of boring. Yeah. Um, oh, Kate Mara was in that one. Kate oh, Mara's in the film. Yeah. I yeah. remember. She is. I like her. Sister of the other one who isn't actually the other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You have to watch. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Best snowmobile chase since Die Hard 2. That's the one positive thing I would yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Olivia Wilde looks. She does, but she kind of plays someone who's a bit thick, and you know that Olivia Wilde is smarter than that. And she is being Irish after all, so... Two out of ten. Two? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so that was depressing. Sorry, definitely. Best movie! <laughs> Woo! Of uh, May 2013 was... Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> is anyone surprised? Hmm? Hmm? Mm. Uh, sequel to 2009's film not as good in my <laughs> opinion now that time has passed um, Kirk and Spock and co face Benedict Cumberbatch his villain John Soon. Harrison Soon. where is he Soon. Uh, and there's some kind of the whole thing vague but also quite implicit 9-11 subtext to this whole thing um, no Clark's in it, but he doesn't speak, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Peter Weller, Robocop, is in it, and he speaks a lot, <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> Simon uh, Pegg's in it, and he speaks a medium amount, so that's also fine. Alice Eve is in it, in her underwear, and she's fine. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Parts of it are really good. Uh, J.J. Abrams knows how to choreograph the shit out of an action sequence, for the most part. There's a shootout on you know, Klingon Planet, Klingon where I was like, world, yeah. but That's a really great scene, actually, yeah. But there's another bit where the ship is losing gravity and everyone it goes a bit inceptionally they're running along yeah. always. That's just this is fantastic. Yeah. Downsides. Uh kind of crap ending. Really, really disappointing ending. After it's a huge setup and you see uh, Spock get his Tom Cruise run on. <laughs> uh it just kind of ends with a punch out, which is lame. And it cuts to two weeks later, which is yeah, so really annoying. Semi forgive it when you're watching it, but the more you think back about it or the more you re watch it, you'd be like I was really disappointed by it because I really thought it was going to be the first kind of big film, yeah. like five star film of the year, and it really, it Doesn't, really wasn't. No, it wasn't as good as the last one, and the whole publicity setup for the film, as well as Benedict Cumberbatch's role, once it kind of gets revealed, you're like, oh. yeah, it's a bit under. It's very good. But simultaneously underwhelming. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I would give it seven and a half out of ten. I would give it eight out of ten because I just said I'd give it four out of five and I had to stick to my guns. Um, but there were I did have issues with it and it just didn't impress me as much as the first one. No. So that's the best. Boo! It is a film called. Twenty one and over. guys who were in high school together go to meet another guy that they were in high school with on his college campus for his 21st birthday and they want to take him out and get him hammered you know because it's America and it's the first legal night that he can go out and drink um so they do that but he has a big important life-changing meeting the following morning uh and unfortunately they get him super drunk and they kind of forget where he lives yeah. and the whole film is them trying to bring their drunk friend home doesn't sound like it should be the plot of a, no. a full film, and you're right, it is. No. It shouldn't be. No, I can't think of a single redeeming quality. There was a bit by where that guy got run over by a rampaging bull. I kind of smirked at that, but that was about it. Mm. No, no, not even that. No. Uh, one, yeah, one out of ten. Very quickly. June. June. Behind a candelabra. Yes. Michael Douglas and Matt Damon playing Liberace and Scott Thorson. Not getting released in America, so sorry all of American fans, so we hope you caught it on HBO last week. Uh, keep an eye out for Rob Lowe, he steals the entire movie out from everyone. Yep. He's like, Man. oh, is this your movie? Yoink! I'm gonna take that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna snatch your wig. <laughs>
Much Ado About Nothing. Yes. The film that Joss Whedon made in a week in on a break from filming The Avengers because he's a workaholic nut job. Black and White Shakespeare adaptation featuring all of his friends in his house. And finally, Man of Steel. Yeah. Uh, the stupidly handsome Henry Cavill. Really? I don't think he's so handsome. Yeah, he is. No. No. He's stupidly handsome. <laughs> So there are the three we recommend you check out in June and then check back in with us at the end of June to see whether we were right about uh, whether you should have got to see them or not. And until then, there's been Mary Burke. Hi. I've been Brogan Hayes. He's been Roy Cashin. You've been a lovely audience. No. And this has been Wild Dogs Ariel. On YouTube. On the internet. On the internet. On the internet. Let me out. <laughs>